Um, thank you, Maria, and thank you everybody for being here. Now we are moving to the first contribute talk to today. Right now we will have the pleasure of listening Jesus Alberto Jaime Sarriaga from Conicet University of Buenos Aires, whose talk is titled Atomons in Molecules, an Aristotelian approach to conceive composition in quantum chemistry. Um, Jesus Alberto, you have 20 minutes for your presentation. When you have for, uh, spoken for 10 minutes, I will interrupt you to let you know that you have 10 minutes more. Okay, so the floor okay. is yours. Okay, thank you for the presentation. This is a work that is part of my PhD thesis. And uh, well, in this occasion, I'm going to, to present to you specifically a hylomorphic account of composition in quantum chemistry. Well, I have structured the talk as follows. I will begin by briefly introducing the problem of the reduction of molecular chemistry to quantum mechanics. Then I will explain the main characteristics of the Aristotelian approach that I'm going to subscribe to and establish the aim of this project. Next, I will explain my case study, namely the quantum theory of atoms in molecules, putting particular emphasis on the notion of topological atom. I will continue to analyze the meteorological assumptions underlying Kutain, which will lead me to propose the notion of topological imprint. Then, I will introduce the Aristotelian doctrine of hylomorphism, appealing to current version of this. After that, I will explain my proposal to understand the notion of topological imprint in terms of the causal form. And finally, I will point out what relationship there could be between, in the one side, the emergence and downward causation debate, and in the other side, the hylomorphic approach that I present to you. Well, uh, one of the most important problems in the philosophy of chemistry is the problem of reduction. This idea arises from the relatively successful application of quantum theory to the study of chemical systems and crystallizes with Dirac's well-known dictum that states that the underlying physical laws necessary for the mathematical theory of a large part of physics and the whole of chemistry are those completely known from quantum mechanics. However, the exact application of quantum mechanics to the study of chemical systems is not possible, and it is necessary to introduce approximations and idealizations that are not at all innocent and that have cast off on the viability of set reduction. In fact, this situation has led to the rise of a new discipline known as quantum chemistry, in which laws and principles of both molecular chemistry and quantum mechanics converge making it the perfect scenario for the study of intertheoretical relationships between these two disciplines. The debate on the reduction of chemistry to physics distinguishes between two aspects. On the one hand, the epistemic reduction, which deals with whether chemical theories and concepts can be derived from purely physical theories and concepts or not. On the other hand, the ontological reduction, which has to do with whether chemical entities and are ultimately mere physical entities or not. In this context, this project deals with ontological reduction. The ontological reduction finds its greatest expression in the metaphysical doctrine known as physicalism, understood as a successor theory of materialism. This doctrine affirms that everything that exists in the universe has ultimately a physical nature and is based on the principle of causal closure. According to this principle, no physical fact can be determined by a fact that is not physical. In this context, causality is understood in terms of efficient cause. This type of causality has to do with what changes things undergo and give rise to. An Aristotelian approach rejects physicalism to the extent that it rejects causal monism by appealing, in addition to efficient causation, to formal and material causation. Thus, a hylomorphic approach based on formal and material causation conceives the chemical level and the microphysical or quantum level as mutually determined. The causal form is understood as a top-down metaphysical determination that is a determination from the chemical world to the quantum world. 
for its part, the material cause is understood as a bottom-up metaphysical determination. That is a determination from the microphysical world to the chemical world. So in the context of a hylomorphic approach, substances correspond to fundamental entities, which are studied in different theoretical domains. Moreover, it is possible to provide chemistry and the rest of the special sciences with independence and autonomy. Against this background, the present project aims to offer a non-reductive Aristotelian approach of hylomorphic substances to conceive composition in quantum chemistry, taking the quantum theory of atoms in molecules as a case study. Kutain uh, was developed by Richard Bader and is based on the measurable magnitude of electron density, which determines certain measurable properties of molecules. Bader analyzes the charge distributions of different molecules and notes that the morphology is dominated by maxima in the distribution, which leads to the natural partitioning of molecular space in mononuclear regions. Then, by applying the Virial theorem, it is possible to establish a connection between electron density and energy, and in addition, it's possible to predict the properties of the whole molecule in terms of much smaller fragments which, as we will see later, will be associated with the atoms in the molecule. The dominant morphology is due to the attractive force between nuclei and electrons, and reveals a universal topological feature of electron density, that is, the presence of zero flux surfaces in the gradient vector field of electron density. These surfaces bound certain regions within molecules, which have been identified as the atoms in the molecule. Quoting one of Bader's collaborators, what is perhaps remarkable is that the subspaces defined by zero flux surfaces are immediately identifiable as atoms in a molecule, that is, as uniquely defined atomic fragments of a molecular system. In this way, the set of flux surfaces defines atoms in molecules, and with this, a quantum definition of an atom in a molecule can be established. Thus, Bader intends to offer a solid theoretical basis for Dalton's atomic theory. Quoting the author, the increased understanding that could result from the discovery of a firm theoretical basis for Dalton's theory requires a quantum definition of an atom in a molecule. In the context of Kutain, the superspaces defined by zero flux surfaces are known as topological atoms and have two important characteristics. First, transferability, since they can be transferred from one molecular environment to another with minimal changes in the electron density. Second, additivity, since the properties of the whole molecule can be defined in terms of the properties of the atoms that compose it. Thus, according to Bader, topological atoms resemble conceptual chemistry and therefore, Kutain will provide the quantum foundation for conceptual chemistry. However, Paul Popelier, another specialist on the subject, points out that transferability is not complete and perfect since it is not possible to find two topological atoms coming from two different molecules with exactly the same electron density distribution. In the outer words, every type of nucleus appears inside thousands of possible molecular atoms. In fact, there are millions of carbon molecular atoms because each atom is cut out of a particular chemical molecular environment, of which there are as many as there are molecules. In a manner of speaking, every molecular atom is endowed with properties it inherits from the molecule of which it is a part. Popeler calls Bader topological atoms molecular atoms. And uh, according to this author, these topological atoms inherit unique and unrepeatable features from its molecular environment. And these features will be of central importance as we will see later. Now, I am going to analyze the meriological assumptions that underlie Kutain. 
Meriology is the formal study of pathological relations and its axiomatization can be summarized in two principles. The principle of meriological transitivity and the principle of unrestricted fusion. The first principle can be stated as follows. If Y is part of X and X is part of C, then Y is part of C. For example, if my fingers are part of my hand and my hand is part of my body, then my fingers are part of my body. In this sense, we can distinguish between two transitive schemes. First, the classical scheme where nuclei and electrons are part of atoms and in turn, atoms are part of molecules. Second, the cutane scheme where nuclei and electron density are part of topological atoms and in turn, topological atoms are part of topological molecules. At this point, it will be worth investigating what possible relationship there will be between these two schemes, particularly between topological atoms and classical atoms. However, um, this is not Sorry, the uh, Jesus, uh, ten, mi ten, 10 minutes left. Okay. What I now want to focus on is the principle of unique unrestricted fusion, which states that if there is a set of entities, then there is a single fusion of such entities. Then the question is, does cutane conceive molecule as a unique collection of topological atoms? To answer this question, let us turn to molecular chemistry. In this field, molecular identity is determined by composition and structure. Optical isomerism is a clear example of the importance of a structure. This phenomenon responds to the fact that there can be two different molecules with exactly the same kind of constituent atoms, and the difference lies precisely in the structure. Now, regarding good thing, we have seen that topological atoms inherit specific characteristics of the molecular environment in which they are found. So it can be thought that, in fact, given certain individual topological atoms, they can fuse to form a molecule in a unique way. Therefore, in principle, we, will, we wouldn't have to resort to the structure of the atomic parts to define the molecular whole, because this structural information is already imprinted in the chart distribution of each topological atom. In fact, such information is part of the distinctive features that topological atoms inherit from the molecule to which they belong and that are reflected in the topography of electron density as a fingerprint that characterizes each topological atom. I will call this fingerprint of topological atom the topological imprint. Here I show graphic examples to understand this notion of topological imprint. These images show the topography of electron density of atoms of different molecules. The fragments enclosed in red rectangles correspond to hydrogen atoms and are found with different atoms according to the different molecules they form. Lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. As can be seen in the images, the charge distribution of the hydrogen atoms changes in accordance with the change in the molecular environment. In other words, the topography of electron density evidences what I have called topological imprint, which is the fingerprint of each topological atom inherited from the molecular environment in which it is found. However, the issue is not so simple, since precisely one of the criticisms against the principle of unique unrestricted fusion is that due to its unrestricted nature, it guarantees that any entities that exist can form a fusion no matter how crazy it is being said differently. Regardless of the topological imprint, we can have a fusion that involves atoms from different molecules. For instance, the meteorological fusion that brings together the atoms of a water molecule and the, mo the atoms of a formaldehyde molecule. Furthermore, this principle, by not accounting for topological imprint, doesn't guarantee the uniqueness of molecules that have isomers. In such a case, for meriology, two different molecules with exactly the same constituent atoms, regardless of their structure, will be the same. 
the need to take into consideration the structure of molecules to account for the kind of material objects they are is therefore evident. In the theoretical scheme proposed by Bayer, we must take into consideration the topological imprint of atoms, which encrypts essential information about the structure of molecules. This problematic situation, due to the principle of unique uh, unrestricted fusion, has already been pointed out and is associated with Peter Van Iwagen's special composition question. Under what circumstances do certain entities make up a whole? In this sense, some authors have recently proposed using neo-Aristotelian approaches to restrict the principle of unrestricted fusion. I will now introduce some of these approaches. Hylomorphism dates back to ancient Greek philosophy and constitutes one of Aristotle's main philosophical commitments. Namely, that any material entity is not metaphysical, metaphysically simple, but is composed of matter and form. The matter corresponds to the parts of com or components of the object at the stake, while the form determines the unity of a set of components that make up a whole, not as a mere heap, but as a true unit. Form is the cause of something being what it is without being part of it. Thus, matter underlies form, and form defines the essence of the entity. This work is particularly based on two modern versions of hylomorphism. First, the Marmodoros version conceives the form as an operation that unifies the parts by, by re-identifying them in a way they cannot be when apart from the whole. By way of explanation, the parts in the whole are different from the parts in isolation. Second, Kuhn's version called parts as sustaining instruments theory. According to this theory, the parts exert bottom-up causation on the whole, which depends diachronically on the parts. In turn, the whole exerts top-down causation on the parts, which are synchronically dependent on the whole. Said in the words of the author, the persistence of the whole is grounded in the ongoing cooperation of the parts and the active and passive powers of the parts are grounded in corresponding primary powers of the whole. An important characteristic is that the form is not just another part of the whole, but rather an entity ontologically different from that of the material part. Another way in which hylomorphism is usually understood is in terms of potentiality and actuality. Matter has the potentiality to be part of the whole, and this potentiality is actualized through the form. With this theoretical apparatus at hand, let's return to our case study. Okay, well, the question to answer is, what will it be the unifying principle, the form underlying cutane? The proposal to, of this work is to understand the topological imprint as a manifestation of the chemical causal form. Recall that we have two levels of composition in cutane. On the one hand, the topological atom composed of the nucleus and electron density, and on the other hand, the topological molecule composed of topological atoms. At both compositional levels, the topological imprint plays a determining role, since it is this that defines the essential features of the parts that, that make up the topological atom, and in turn of the atomic parts that make up the topological molecule. Therefore, in the context of cutane, I propose to understand the molecule as a hylomorphic substance composed of atomic material parts unified through the chemical form. The unification process occurs by virtue of a re-identification of the atomic material parts as belonging to the molecular whole which is reflected in the topological imprint. We have then that the molecular and atomic levels are mutually determined and in the same way, the atomic and microphysical levels are also mutually determined. I would like to conclude with some perspectives on possible points of contact between the new Aristotelism and the emergence and downward causation debate. It is well known within our philosophical community, the emergentist position of Professor Robin Henry, 
He argues for an emergence of chemical entities on the basis of downward causation, the phenomenon where higher level entities or properties exert a causal influence on lower level entities or properties. His argument draws on a contranomic criterion according to which a system exhibits downward causation when it can be affirmed that said system would behave differently if it were determined solely by the laws that govern the material of which it is composed. Recently, Marius Tabasek published a work in which he argues that emergence and downward causation can be better understood in an Aristotelian framework. Specifically, the author holds that downward causation can be described as a specific type of manifestation of unique dispositions. These dispositions or powers have an intrinsic nature associated with, the, with an essence that can be understood in terms of the Aristotelian concept of formal causation. According to Tabaset, the powers associated to downward causation are closely related to the essence of the whole at stake. And as we have seen, this very essence is determined by the form. Then it is possible to understand downward causation as a kind of top-down metaphysical determination assimilated in terms of the formal cause. In this way, I believe that an Aristotelian framework not only offers new insights for the debate on emergence and downward causation, but also offers a friendlier framework for understanding these concepts. Uh, well, that's all, and many thanks for the for your attention. Mm -hmm.